So listen, I love turning stuff on the lathe, but as turners, man, some of the stuff we turn, I mean, listen, don't you guys get bored ever? How many bowls and pens and magic wands can you possibly make before you look at the machine and just think, well, I wonder what else it could make? Because we just make the same crap over and over again, and a lot of it is dull. And look, here's the thing about a lathe. It can make anything that's cylindrical or spherical or conical or... I just ran out of adjectives for circular, but you get the idea. It could make anything that's based on a circular shape. So how about we make this? This is a 16th century Hungarian battle mace. And I want you to notice that every single part of it is round. So why don't we make that on the lathe? Because honestly, what else am I gonna do today? Okay, a project like this is complicated enough that I do not want to wing it. I want something to work from. So I've got the original drawing, and the museum catalog says that the haft of this mace, the handle, is 20 inches long. So if I've got that, plus a set of dividers and a couple of different measuring tools, I can make a full-size drawing of this thing. So I'm going to tape a big sheet of paper to my workbench, use my dividers and my drafting square to make a full-size drawing of it with kind of a rough approximation of where everything is. And then I'm going to tack this whole thing up above the lathe and I've got a full-size template to work from as I turn. The first part of the mace I wanted to make was the haft, because I know the dimensions of this and all the proportions of the rest of it are going to be based off the haft. So I grabbed a piece of tulip wood. Have you heard of tulip wood before? Because I hadn't until I went to an auction and accidentally bought a lot of it. Like, a lot of it. I thought it was white oak. Turns out, it was just dusty. Anyway, I've got a bunch of it, so I might as well use it. I cut a piece, got it on the lathe, roughed it out, planed it flat, and then I went to my large, full-scale drawing and started taking down measurements and marking out where my details would be. I turned a bunch of decorative beads, flat sections, and little swells to make it interesting and easy to hold. Then I turned a tenon on the top that would fit into the ball and a nice decorative pommel on the bottom. Then I put a screw into the end, hung it up, and stained it with Minwax English Chestnut. This is my go-to color when I want something to look, like, instantly old. It just imparts this nice patina onto the wood because it goes on sort of uneven and blotchy, and that can be good sometimes. When that process is done, you get something that already looks like it's been sitting around for a hundred years. And I have to be honest, this seems like a really good part so far. Even just this, I can imagine swinging this thing around in a murderous rage. And that's got to be a good sign, because I'm only like half done. Next, I want to turn the ball at the end of the mace. And that means turning a more or less perfect sphere five inches in diameter. And that's at least a little bit tricky. So I grabbed a couple of pieces of walnut that were thick and had good color. I epoxied them together, got them on the lathe, and turned them into a rough cylinder. Then I took a bowl gouge and just started shaping them into a more or less sphere shape. Now at this point, I found there were some wormholes in the wood. I thought I was going to be able to turn those away, but they went a lot deeper than I thought, so I had to do something about them. Usually this would be a great job for epoxy mixed with some sort of sawdust, but I need this project to move along faster than that. I don't have time for epoxy to cure. So I'm going to use a different technique where I flood the whole area with super glue, then sprinkle on sawdust, rub off the excess, flood on more super glue, and then alternate between super glue and sawdust until I've filled everything up. So just a couple of rounds of super glue followed by sawdust, and you get a nice hard filled material that you can sand and turn pretty much instantly. It's a really good option when you don't have time for epoxy to cure. Once I had a rough cylinder, I installed my sphere turning cups on the lathe. Now, if you're curious about this whole process, I've got a video where I made a decorative saw handle and I turned a couple of spheres. I went into that process in a lot more detail. I'll put a link down in the description and you can check that out. With the cups installed, I can rotate the sphere around any axis I want to and work on the high spots. So you get the sphere mounted and tightened down and then you just turn off the high spots. Then you stop the lathe, rotate it, turn it a little bit more, you keep going until it's just about perfect. And then there's some sanding. Honestly, just a ton of sanding. But when it's over, it's very hard to argue with the finished product. 
Now it's time to make the spikes and set them into the ball. And this is more complicated than it seems because it involves drilling a bunch of very exactly placed holes in a perfect sphere. And that's not easy. So here's what I did. I took the sphere over to the lathe, mounted it back up, and scribed three parallel lines. And those are going to give me the locations for my three rings of spikes. Then I need to worry about having two holes that are exactly 180 degrees opposite from one another. One of them is going to be for the haft, and the other one is going to be for the long spike at the top of the ball. If these aren't placed really exactly in a straight line, then the whole thing's going to look crooked. And if it looks crooked, it's going to look stupid. So I take the sphere over to the drill press, glue a couple of blocks of scrap wood down to the press, and then lock everything on the drill press down in position. Then I'll take a big spade bit and drill the largest hole I can in my scrap wood. Now I have a cup that will hold my sphere and automatically center it. So when I drop the sphere into it, I've already got the dead center underneath the head of the drill press. I can go in and drill my top hole. Now the challenge is flipping it over and drilling the other hole exactly opposite to the first one. So I'm going to take an old broken drill bit that I don't use anymore and glue that into the hole I made at the bottom of my waste blocks. That's going to give me an indexing pin. So when I drop the sphere with the original hole right over that indexing pin, the part that's sticking up is exactly 180 degrees opposite. When I drill that out, I've got two holes that are in a perfect line with one another, and the haft and the spike are going to be perfectly lined up. Now the other thing I have to do is lay out the locations for my spikes, and those have to be evenly spaced and symmetrical too. So I'm going to use the magic of dividers. So I want to have five spikes on each of my smaller rings and ten spikes on my center ring. So I'll set the dividers to a distance that seems about right, and then I'll walk my way around one of the smaller rings. And I'm going to walk around five steps. And what I'm looking to do is stop in the exact same place that I end. That'll tell me that everything's been divided up evenly. And it takes several tries to get this right, and I have to loosen and tighten the dividers until I get the distance just perfect. But eventually, I can walk around five steps and drop right into the hole where I started. Then I can use the dividers just like an awl and push in some deeper holes, and that's going to tell me where to drill. Now my sphere is completely laid out, and it's time to actually make the spikes, drill them, and install them. So here is the prototype. Now. I've got to produce a bunch of these. And the way I'm going to do this is by chucking up a piece of cherry and then holding my prototype up against it and marking out the places where my major diameters are going to go. And I'm going to get those two diameters with a pair of calipers. I've already set these to the measurements that I need, so I can use a caliper and a parting tool to turn down my stock until it's the right two diameters. Once I've got those, I can just turn away the material between them and turn in some nice gentle curves, do my little sharpening detail on the end, sand the whole thing, and cut it off. Once that's done, I've got two spikes, which means I only have 18 more to go. <sighs> but you know, the thing about doing stuff like this is the first couple are really difficult, then it gets a little easier, then it gets into a pattern. Then at one point you turn around and there's no more stock because you're done. <laughs> That's always a nice feeling. Once I got all the spikes installed, I let the epoxy dry, hit it with a couple coats of clear acrylic, and it was done. How'd it come out? Well... <laughs> Honestly, this thing is a ton of fun. It looks awesome, and I really enjoy just swinging it around in my backyard. And when I compare it to the original that I made the copy of, it looks pretty good. This is a pretty good replica. And I think I'll only get better at that the more of these I do. So how about this? Let's make this into a regular series on this channel. I'm going to call it Forged from Wood, and I will make reproductions of real historical weapons using awesome hardwoods. If you have suggestions about what I should make, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. I'm really interested in what my viewers would like to see. And if you enjoyed watching me turn this on the lathe, maybe you'd like to get into wood turning. 
Well, I wrote a book about that. It's called One Week to Wood Turning, and it's a complete guide to all the gear that you need to get started. I cover lathes, tools, grinders, shop setup, safety, and a bunch of other stuff. It's been out as an ebook for a long time, but just this week, it came out in paperback. So go over to rexkruger.com book and get all the information about what you get when you buy that book. And for my regular viewers, don't worry. I haven't forgotten about the Woodwork for Humans series. I will be back next week with an awesome, ultra basic hand tool woodworking project. I've thought up something really good and you're not going to want to miss it. And before I go, I always have to thank my patrons on Patreon. Because of their support, I get to do things like this that are fun and honestly kind of absurd instead of doing something like making a cabinet for a client, which honestly is boring and I don't want to do any more of that. And my patrons are helping me not do that stuff so I can do this stuff instead. If you'd like to help me make insane things out of wood like this, go over to patreon.com slash Rex Kruger. Check out the early access, rewards, and exclusive content that I only offer to my patrons. And to all of my viewers, especially my international viewers, thank you so much for watching.